Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of What Your Money Can Buy. In today's video, I'm gonna show you what you can buy for $478,000 because I just bought it for a client of mine, that's right. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a unit I just purchased, a studio unit I just purchased for a investor client of mine in downtown Toronto by Lakeshore in this building known as 38 in Newsy. And today's video is going to be a quick video because it's just a studio unit. It's not that big of a unit, but I'm not going to just use this as an opportunity to tell you about the unit I just purchased, but also tell you what it means and what it says about the Toronto real estate market. In this case, the downtown Toronto condo market with regards to investing. So this condo 38 in Uzi is located at the major intersection of Lakeshore and Bathurst. And you could think of it in terms of area analysis, uh, nestled right in between city place condos to the East and Liberty Village to the West. Now, if you're a long time viewer of this channel, I'm not the biggest fan of Liberty Village, but that's just my own professional and personal opinion. I've had many clients who differ on that front and that's perfectly fine. Similarly, City Place, I'm a little bit more optimistic on City Place as opposed to Liberty Village, believe it or not, but even City Place, I'm not the biggest fan of. So where this condo is situated, I think is perfectly nestled in between. Now, one thing about this condo and condos surrounding 38 and Uzi, so the adjacent and surrounding condos, the key thing to know is when you're buying in these condos, this obviously also extends to other areas as well, but you have to make sure that you're not close to the Gardner Expressway. All right, guys, so welcome to the unit. Come on in. So when I first initially started working with this buyer, we were looking at one bedrooms, junior work bedrooms, but quickly it got very clear to us that for investment purposes, especially a buyer such as this, who is a long-term holder, condos don't really cash flow well at all. So if you're looking for condos as a cash flow investment, off the bat, you're kind of fighting against the tide. The maintenance fees in combination with the mortgage payments, especially in this high interest rate environment. It's going to make a condo that yields very well in terms of rental income relative to the expenses a non-starter. However, if you are going to delve into the condo market for investment purposes, especially as a longtime holder who is looking to get some rental yield on a monthly basis, some additional income, the best option and the math works every time when we compare one bedrooms and studios are indeed studio units. So this fact became very clear to us. The relative rental income of a studio that's expertly picked in a proper area to the maintenance is much better when you compare it to a junior one bedroom. So in this instance, this studio unit was asking for around 488 or 490, and me and my client managed to purchase it for 478. And if you're looking at a one bedroom equivalent around 478, even 500, in downtown Toronto, in today's condo environment, you're looking at either really old one bedroom bedrooms in that price range, even 30, 40 K higher in the five tens or brand new condos that are listed as one bedrooms, but essentially are really studios in disguise. So those walk through one bedroom units that I have discussed on my channel in the past. If you don't know what I'm referring to as a walk through one bedroom, it's essentially a studio where the bedroom is right by the door. So in a sense, it's actually kind of worse than a studio. And you have to walk through the bedroom to get access to the living, dining, kitchen, and the bedroom has no door. You can check out that video on my channel channel right here. Nonetheless, at the 470, 480, 490 for investment purposes, a studio is much better in terms of quality than what you'd be able to find in terms of junior one bedrooms in downtown Toronto. And the rental yield is somewhat close, if not in some instances more, in some very centrally located building. So here for the purchase price of 478, we're looking at a rental yield in the worst event of 1,950 to the best case scenario of 2150. The maintenance though is much lower than a one bedroom. The maintenance here you're only looking at $230. My client was not using traditional financing in terms of a mortgage. My client, my client was purchasing nearly all cash. When that is the case and you're talking about this sum of money, and your priority is something that pays itself off on a monthly basis, a studio is much better than a junior one bedroom or a one plus one. 
Although studio investments are not perfect, right? There always is pros and cons. So when you're looking at condos, provided for the fact off the bat that you've acknowledged that condos are not good for rental yield, but you're choosing to delve into condos, studios are indeed the best option. That is the positive. The negative is the growth potential is not the highest. Here, we bought this for 478. During peak, peak, absolute peak market when the market was its hottest ever, units exactly like this unit, we're selling in the 520s or 525s. So there is room to grow, don't get me wrong, but a really good one plus one is gonna grow more than a studio. So that is the downside of studio investing. It's better on a rental yield front relative to the maintenance. However, with regards to growth potential and the ceiling, well, the ceiling for how much it can grow is lower. So you're looking at a basic studio, right? And you'll see some of the B-roll footage. Uh, it has ensuite laundry, one washroom, obviously a side kitchen. There's a movable island uh, that came with the property as a chattel. But what I really like about this property, and I think it's one of the best attributes, if you come a bit closer, is that as you will be able to see, as you will see, right, this unit is on the 11th floor and it's somewhat directly exposed on the east side to the Gardner Expressway. Now, this usually is a deal breaker, right? Now, why do I bring this to your attention? Because right now, this is being recorded from the inside of the property. And if I stay silent, you will barely be able to hear the Gardner Expressway. But now that I open the door, we'll look at the contrast in terms of the insulation. So this is very key. And one last note on this building. So 38 Inuzi is the kind of a building where I would recommend more so for investment purposes as opposed to end user lifestyle purposes. Now don't get me wrong, there is much worse you can do in terms of end user lifestyle and investment purposes. But the thing about 38 Inuzi is that if you're gonna buy in this building, I would definitely recommend you buy above the floors of four and five. Because as you go up higher, higher on the floors, the number of units per floor gets reduced and you have better view. The higher, the better in this building, especially higher than I would say the sixth to the eighth floor. Anyways, this was another edition of what your money can buy. As always, leave your questions in the comments. Let me know if you have any further inquiries. This is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Realtor Inc. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. You can find my contact information in the description box and obviously on the screen as well. Thank you very much. Stay safe and stay tuned.